We always have a strong fight. I'm never wrong. Open your mouth. But I walked in here, and on my second week, I know the state was working back and forth doing everything and the tech booth. And after service, I asked me, why is the pastor doing all this? He said, there ain't nobody else doing it. I said, like, I think I can do it. And 15 months later, I spoke on the stage, which I've never done. I, yeah, <laughs> it's been great. I've heard a lot in the last 15 months because we've been three and God. And two months left, so, okay, we'll go into I'm talking as loud as I well not as loud as I can, but I don't want to go. I don't want to screw up and blow up the mic again. But <clears throat> ten months before I came in here, God prepared me for the biggest storm I went through in my life. And so when it come through all that, and I walked in here, Jay preaching on the daily repentance and you know, this one of them stories is talking straight to me, even though the room's full of people. He moved on into Moses going through the wilderness and not liking to speak and all this stuff. And yeah, now I'm up here in front of all you guys just speaking. <laughs> God just wrote so much. Voluntarily. Is it voluntarily? This is like the last place I really want to be is in front of everybody in the center of the tent. So that's not good. I like my box back there behind me. But God just, even though, I mean, he knew I was going through the storm before I even realized I was going to slip and fall and fall down when I hit the bottom of this carry says, you don't hit bottom until you bounce. And when I bounced, Jesus was there and caught me. That's what the Lord said. Thank you. 
pushing forward. Yes. Amen. Harvey got to keep pushing forward. Right. And do not stop.
had $400 in my water meter. I was working with a lady called Sis um, from 701 Property Management. And I, I prayed and I said, God, you know what I need now. <laughs> and I kid you not, when I walked into the office that morning, I opened the door and there staring at me is a water heater. And I said, Sis, what's up with that water heater? She said, there's nothing wrong with it. We just wanted to upgrade all the ones we had. You can have it if you want to. Sometimes you don't know where to start or how to start, but the best way to start is right where you're at. I know you guys. Amen. Well, this little story that I'm going to tell right quick, it 
I remember it very vividly. Uh, at the time, I never thought that it was God's will through me to heaven. But this situation one time, we, me and my uncle Paul and a couple other family members, my daughter, we were going down the river as we usually got done in the early spring, up from North Fort River. Water was going pretty fast. We really shouldn't have been out there, but we changed it anyway. Uncle Paul was 80 years old in his little bitty John boat with his, another family member, and me and my daughter was in my boat. Little bitty 10 foot John boat. There we're going, carrying the boat down there to the river. The very first day, Uncle Paul and Sam dumped the boat in the water. There it was sunk right there. I should have known right then. That was. <laughs> We shouldn't be doing this, but hey, we are who we are. We love the pitch it is. It's all good. We get that first trip done there. When the second day comes along, we put, we had to run back and get our bait or our catfish off the bait poles that we put up. We get approximately halfway through this trip, and with lack of better words, all hell just breaks loose. We are going in this narrow stretch between a, the, the bank and the sandbar. And it got really fast, really quick, we were with rapids like just crazy. Well, as I'm standing, I mean not standing, but in the boat before that area, I'm getting a catfish off this bank pole. I just have to look around, there's Uncle Paul and my cousin mine Sam. They sunk the boat in this rapid, Sam standing in the boat, and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, we're Uncle Paul. He's going down the river, 80 years old. Can't get his footing, can't stand up. Huh. I hurried up and I paddled that boat on that same bar, shoved that boat up on that bank, told her to sit still, don't move. I, I got bad ankles. I can't run to save my life if I had to. But I ran down this river, a big chunk of rock, didn't think twice, all the way there. I was full, full fledged, just running. Didn't take twice. Running down there, and like I said, I don't want to toot my own horn because everybody knows it. It's a good word working through me. I see him way down there, long ways away with what the current's steady taking me. I jump in, I'm swimming as hard as I can. That water's taking me faster, and he's getting further. And if it wasn't for the good Lord getting me there, by the time I got to him to be able to grab onto him, all I seen was this much of him. I see his mouth and his nose, and, and he was steady going under the whole time. And I thought to myself, oh my God, I can't finish the rest of this trip. We have another four miles to go. If the good Lord wouldn't have helped me at that moment, and old Paul, bless him, is. Uncle Paul would have died on the trip. His boat sunk way back there, Whitney's way back there, and I've got him on the bank, and he's out of breath, flat wore out. And now I gotta think to myself, how am I gonna get that boat, all their equipment, everything to where we take out? And I tell you what, that situation, I don't it, it wasn't me that done it. There's no way that I could have done it. It was it had it had to be. God keeping the eye over me. And to be able to finish that trip the way it happened in every time. I tell you what, the good Lord works in mysterious ways. And at that time, I got new. How did I do this? How? If it wasn't for him, to be able to get me through that situation. Yeah, amen. So, just every day, think that any time you wake up every day, any situation can happen like that. And you can pull a strength down from deep down inside and you not even know you're at it. But it happens by the grace of God. Amen. He also said he wasn't coming up here, so. You <laughs> <laughs> really got to do it. The guy for you. Henry! Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Because 
Christ has done amazing things. And, and I'm telling you right now, if you don't have a story like this, or if you can't relate in some reason, I'm not sure if there's any of you here, but if you seek out God, you will have stories like this. Uh, he does amazing and impossible things. And he's restoring a community here. And I love seeing it, guys. I love seeing it, but more than that, he's doing it to me. It's, it's a, I'm a part of it. You get what I mean? It's a weaving together of a fabric. Yep. You get what I mean? Yep. So it's a people group, man. I, I don't know why you keep standing out to me. Man, Lord, God's had something amazing in your life. Yes. I, and it's, I, mean, I, know, I can say that about anybody in the room, but he's highlighting you. I mean, it really he is. I mean, I, I, again, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm here. I have a million no, things. I'm saying still you, Ian. <laughs> okay. But, um, guys, I thought I was standing back there. I was like, man, I'm not going to do this. Uh, but then I was like, man, I'm going to do this. But uh, I didn't know whether I'd come up here and I'd be confident or if I'd cry or if I'd get angry or anything. But I'm telling you guys, that God led me up here to tell a story about his truth. Okay? And I don't, I don't have any, I don't have anything to do with it. Do it. You know, I'm, I'm just up here saying yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm so confused right now. You have no clue. <laughs> uh, I look around the room and I see people that I, I've known for years. Um, and my heart is just, just filled with love for our people. And I never knew that I would have a family this big, this great. When I, when I, when I was a kid, man, my, my family was, was, was hard, like just in, in poverty and we, we struggled. And, Lord always gave us what we needed. But I'm telling you, I prayed time and time again for that family. I didn't realize that I was praying for this family as well. And man, my, man, my family is growing and it's, it's coming into something more and more. And I see God restoring again a community of people to love. And I'm, I'm, I know a lot of people in this room have, uh, have uh, been involved with or have, uh, you know, been through a program with the Danville Re Rescue Mission, and uh, man, just yes. <laughs> we're doing a I, I never leave that. Um, God's doing amazing things in the city, and I, I want to partner with it even more and more. And I think that um, well, what message that God's put on me right now is that we just need to say yes to what He's saying. He, we want to we lean in His direction. And if he's calling you up right now to be up here, then you probably should be. <laughs> Just letting you know, because there's a message that each one of us has. And, and if we don't proclaim that message, we're putting on a lampshade. Okay? Um, I know that God has, has done amazing things in my life, but until I started, until I started really being like, I'm not going to sell myself short anymore. I'm not going to tell myself that I am not worth it. I'm not going to tell myself that because of this happened or this happened, I'm disqualified. It's not going to happen. If you want to know that God is what is delivered me through the most thing, it's the present moment right now. I used to hate myself. I used to crawl in my skin. The freedom of God is resting on me. I'm at peace with myself. I love myself. And I used to think that I was never going to be a part of something like this. And, and I'm standing here, and i got three seconds. I don't know. <laughs> but I hope you, I, sp I spoke to somebody. And again, if, if you feel like you should be up here, you probably should. Amen. Yeah. All right. Is this volunteer? No. Nobody's forcing me to do this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
and red was Antwerp. And um, well, I was hooked on ice, and um, when God speaks to me, I turn super red. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, um, yeah, that was my story. So when they spoke those words, I was like, man, I knew that was my story, but I just sat there and I didn't say anything. And then, uh, all week, I heard it said, you know, I was taught it by it. But, um, yeah. <laughs> what, what's that?
three minutes. Sorry, lady, we got All the pause button back here. We're good. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to start with my son. I, we have a son, or my husband and I had a son named Charles. Um, Charles, when he was little, wanted to be a priest, which um, was kind of unique because we were not religious. We were not practicing. We were not. Um, but he had a very strong and um, steadfast faith. And when he was 16, he passed away of cancer. Um, and my husband and I and our other son turned away from God. We were just like, that's it. He can't be real because nobody would put us through that kind of pain. And when our, when our, son was, our other son was 14 at the time, when he was 17, he joined the military. He got deployed, and while he was overseas, he met, um, I don't know what they call them, pastors in the military? Chaplains. Chaplains, yeah. He met a chaplain and befriended him, and um, he would call us and talk to us. And um, Kendall would be like, you know, Mom, I found the kingdom of God, and I know Charles is okay, and I know life is going to be well. Um, and that got, that, that's started conversations between Gary and I here. And we started going to church, a few other churches in town. Um, but we would only do like the Sunday things, and we would leave. And then we came here, and we were just talking, and I don't even remember what brought us here. My good looks. And when we first started coming here, um, Jay didn't preach much. We had a, a screen, and it was filtered in from Champaign-Urbana. Yeah. And we were thought, well, this is weird and a little awkward, but we're going to sit it out a little bit. And then we started seeing Jay's vision for the church, um, and we, we just kept coming, and we kept coming. And this is home. Um, this, is, this is the first place where... Um, we can be okay. We can be messy. We can screw up. Um, I'm trying very hard not to cuss right now because I'm just You're going to right right now. Right. Um, I'll be the preacher cussing. <laughs> <laughs> and, right? Well, and it just, and now I'm to the point where I can, I can, I can hear God talking to me. And I can, I can see the changes in my husband. And my son is still I mean, he is married now, and him and his wife host small groups, and they're very religious. But I feel like um, I feel like that walk we had to take to be able to go deeper into our faith. And honestly, since since we've been coming here, I can I can look back now and I can see um, some of the things that God has done for us that we were blinded by at the, at the time. Yeah. Um, you know, our, our son that passed away, we lived in a town and he was bullied a lot. He, you know, he was ADHD and, and kids pick on him. Um, and he was miserable. And when he was in fourth grade, we had to take him to counseling for, uh, he wanted to kill himself, you know, at, at fourth grade. And um, Gary had this opportunity to go back to college and we, and we moved. And within the first week, he had new friends and he blossomed. So the end of his life was just filled with love and joy and, and acceptance. And I don't know why we turned away when that event happened. I, I don't know, but I know that um, this is home. I feel God here. I feel God in my home now. Um, I feel him at work. He's everywhere. And I think that little unconscious voice in your head is him. And He's just doing miraculous things for our community, and I can't, I can't wait to be a part of it. I'm Amen. excited. Yes. So. If you follow that line from that screen <laughs> until tonight, where uh, 75 brothers and sisters show up to hear nobody speak and nobody sing, that's that's a God story. There you go. This is kind of an old story, but I really feel like the Holy Spirit wanted me to share it. Um, if you know me at all, I have a history with um, 
I, I love animals, I've owned horses most of my life. And, you know, the first gift that God gave Adam was the animals. And um, I had this horse, he was goofy and ugly, and nobody liked him but me. And I would ride him, and I was so proud of him because he was just everything I wanted. And he was, he looked like he was from the island of misfit toys. And then he got hurt, and he became aggressive and very dangerous. At the time, right after he got hurt, I knew that I would have to just keep him by himself in the pasture where he couldn't hurt anybody. And I couldn't ride him anymore. I just, he was just an unsafe, dangerous animal. And I was at church. Um, at, at, at the old vineyard and when it was a small building and they were doing a building program and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said I want you to sell that horse and give it to the building program and I knew at that time what that meant because this was during a time that they would slaughter horses for meat in the United States and I knew that nobody would want this horse and it killed me, and I cried, and I wept, and I went through all this stuff, and it was really, really hard to just wait us to give up on this animal and to lay the money on the altar and say, okay, you can have it. Well, the time came, and several opportunities to try to sell him never worked out. Somebody couldn't pick him up. We couldn't get him to the auction. But finally, the right day came, and when I was at the auction, family came up to me and said, we like your horse, we think we can work with him. And I said, I'll tell you what, make the check out to my church, you've got a week, if you don't want him, I won't cash the check, you come back, get your check, and I'll take him back. Because I didn't want anybody getting hurt, and I didn't, didn't want it not to work out. Well, as it turned out, they loved the horse. He worked great for their family, he got along with their animals, and everything was a win-win, and only God knew ultimately that this was what was best for the horse, but it was also what was best for me. And the reason I share this story with you is that many of us have something that's near and dear to our heart. And sometimes God's saying, it's time to let go. It's time to lay it on the altar. You know, um, I can't remember the prophet, but he went out and slayed his oxen in order to follow Jesus. Do you remember who it is? Elijah. Elijah, yes. Some of us have some oxen, oxen that we need to slay. Some of us, like me, have a horse that we need to lay on the altar. And I'm just asking all of you to ask yourself what that thing is. Just some food for thought. Somehow, some way, I'm, I'm still here. I'm 34 years old. I'm 19 years past my expiration date. Ain't salary yet. Uh, four years ago, I held my brother's hand as he took his last breath. He died of a brain tumor. And it was really hard to watch him go to watch something that was supposed to take me that long ago and it was my best friend. And I went rebellious, you know, and I went off and done my own thing. Just about a year ago, I woke up chained to a hospital bed. I was missing half a tooth. And I had an officer ask me if I was gonna keep the state calm in Dalsai. I had a doctor come in and hold my hand and give me 10 months of cognitive life. 
Anyway, I don't want to die right off. I'll just, I'll just wear a diaper and rock a smile. And uh, I sank to the bottom of a bottle. And I was drinking a gallon around the day, and I didn't care who I heard. I was engaged to be married. That fell through. I came back here because I couldn't tell my family over the phone. And the doc says I'm going. So on a whim, I jumped in a buddy's car. And we drove 227 miles to get here. I put him up in a hotel. I called ahead and had some girls to meet up with him and his buddy. And two hours later, I was pulled over because they weren't getting kicked out of their hotel. They were probably still swimming at the time, but they were worried about their car. And I was driving without a license. So I went to jail for the weekend. By the time I got out, their family wired money to get their car out of the impound and get them back to Missouri. And I stayed here for court, the doctors and buildings. Now, uh, that was, that was about eight and a half, maybe a little over nine months ago. So from what Doc says, you know, I'm, I'm, I got under 30 days before I'm going to hit the depends on him. But, I mean, do I look like I'm dying? Because no I sure don't feel like it. All right. And, uh, I'm just going to tell everybody, you know, don't, don't let anybody put a label on you. Don't let anybody bring you down and get you down. Don't let them keep you down. Because it, it, as long as you got some will to go, just keep with it. I mean, like I said, 19 years past my expiration date. And I ain't sour yet.
feeling to go to the hospital, but he was having a heart attack, and we uh, drove him to the hospital, thank God. So that was, he chased the ambulance, Felix, and uh, I was trying to get through some traffic. No, 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 no. the story's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> I had my license for a couple of days. <laughs> a couple of days. I got in the van. He said, give me the keys. He's obviously a little muscular. I gave him the keys because I felt intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's the angry black man thing, okay? I said, sure, you have the keys. I got in the car. He drives the car. Then I have my heart attack. <laughs> 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 to uh, Pennsylvania in uh, 2017, I met Gary Peck. I was, uh, me and uh, Danny Offit, the uh, director of the mission, we was the first black guys to ever step foot in Gary Peck mansion. He had like a baby mansion, but Gary Peck, he's a very famous, uh, well, he's not very famous around here, but locally, he's a big high school football coach. And he was on his deathbed of uh, passing away of cancer. And we was in his house and he was talking about football. And I'm like, man, come on, forget this football stuff. And I started preaching the gospel to, uh, well, the Lord through me started preaching the gospel to uh, Gary. He got saved. And uh, he got off his deathbed for a couple of days. And... And he was calling me. He had a lot of friends in the NFL. He's like, Alex, we're going to Super Bowl, and we're going to this game, and we're going to that game. And uh, and uh, he even gave up smoking, and uh, he he got back on the sick bed. So we drove back out to Pennsylvania, and uh, and I prayed and I fasted by his bedside. <laughs> And um, we had to come back here because I was still a program director of the mission at the time. So I had to get back here. And uh, as we was crossing uh, Indiana lines, coming across Illinois, we got the news that Gary had passed away. Well, his wife, she flew me in first class uh, the following week for the funeral. And uh, I was there while he was giving his eulogy. His sister gave up and gave, uh, you know, gave the testimony. And I just thank God for those moments because, you know, I come, I really come from nothing. I come from the worstest neighborhood you can possibly think of. And, you know, uh, and for God to take me from there to here, I'm grateful.
jails, institutions, and death. Oh my. Um, I have been through the ringer with that. Um, I, I pray every day that God saves um, my two sisters that are in active addiction right now. Um, they're really going through it. But I also want to take a minute to thank God that he's brought me through some really hard times in my life. Yeah. Um, in 2012, I had a brain tumor as well in my left frontal lobe. Um, and God took that out, and I've been in remission since 2012. Yes. Um, he also spared my life in 2016 while I was driving a car, and I shouldn't have been. Um, I literally had every drug in my system possible, and I hit a car that was at a complete stop at Bowman in Maine and went end over end. And he kept me alive through that. I, I think he was trying to wake me up, but it didn't work at that time because I wasn't ready to listen to him. Um, and I had to make a really tough decision this week um, to leave my partner behind who's in active addiction. Um, been together for two years, and I was so, because of my addictions, I, I, I went to prison for 13 months, <clears throat> and was released in September. And I was so angry and so mad and has so many different emotions. Um, but my anxiety was the worst of those. And for the last six months, I couldn't pull myself out of bed. This week, God spoke to me and he said, get up out of bed and make a change. watch him kill himself like that anymore and I can't keep myself in that bed not being able to make advancements in my life and, and do better for myself. Um, so I know God is on my side and I know that he is working in me to help me have a better life and that's all I have.
Turn it over to these guys, but um, everybody has to sing loud. Jill has to sing. 